Coasts are shaped by many processes, and one of the simplest is what wave type there is. Before this, it is helpful to understand some terminologies. Fetch, the distance of open water over which wind can blow. The longer the fetch, the more powerful the wave. Swash, the forward movement of a wave up a beach. Backwash, the backward movement of water down a beach when the wave has broken. Beach, a deposit of sand and shingle at the coast, often found in a bay. Crest, the top of a wave. It is also helpful to know how waves break. They start out by having a circular orbit as they travel at sea, but then the orbit becomes more elliptical since there is resistance to the wave approaching the shore. The elliptical orbit becomes more stretched the further the wave travels up the shore, and then the wave eventually breaks and swashes up the beach. The first type of wave is constructive. They are low waves which surge up the shore and spill with a powerful splash. But notably, they have a weak backwash, a weak backwards movement of water. This is because the beach is permeable and will let water from the wave sink through it, reducing the weight of the new total wave mass and therefore reducing the force which the wave moves backwards at. This causes them to deposit the large amounts of sand and pebbles they carry, literally building the beach and making it more extensive. These waves are formed from storms hundreds of miles away, since the waves have mellowed and surfers prefer these waves to ride on. Philosophically, destructive waves are the exact opposite. These are formed by large storms that literally destroy the beach. They are closely spaced and often interfere with each other, which causes them to be further chaotic as they form a large swirling mass of water. There is little forward motion, swash, but when they break down, they have a powerful backwash, which removes sand and pebbles, the opposite of a constructive wave. There are also other coastal processes at play which shape the coast. A key difference to make sure you know now is that the difference between weathering and erosion is that weathering is just a breakup of material like rock on site, whereas erosion is a breakup of material like rock along with some sorts of transport process. Weathering processes include mechanical and chemical weathering. Mechanical weathering processes can be split into physical and biological. Mechanical weathering is when physical processes take place to break apart large rocks into smaller ones. An example of this is freeze thaw. For example, water settles in between cracks in a cliff, and then the water turns into ice, which naturally has a bigger volume than water, and so the rock is slightly displaced outwards. This causes entire bodies of rock to split. Biological weathering is to do with how organisms physically alter the environment. For example, rabbits dig holes which breaks apart the soil and vegetation like trees break up the soil underneath, which can be even seen on some old roads where the tarmac has been lifted and torn due to the roots spreading. Chemical weathering is to do with chemical processes which disintegrate the rock. For example, rainwater which has absorbed CO2 to make it acidic can then fall on alkaline rocks like limestone and chalk to cause them to weather away. Mass movement is the downward movement or sliding of material under the influence of gravity. Mass movement and weathering create loose material, much of which is carried away by waves and eventually deposited elsewhere. There are four types of mass movement which generally need to be known. Rockfall is when fragments of rock break away from the cliff face. This is often due to freeze-thaw weathering. Landslide, blocks of rock sliding downhill. Mud flow, saturated soil and weak rock flowing down a slope. Rotational slip, a slump of saturated soil and weak rock along a curved surface. There are also three erosion processes which you need to know. Hydraulic action, the erosion that occurs when the motion of water against a rock surface produces mechanical weathering. This can be for example when waves hit a rock surface, the waves will compress air in the gaps which cause them to widen and break apart the rock over time as a whole. Abrasion, the erosion of a rock surface by friction between rocks and other particles. This tends to happen with large rocks, and when the rocks chip, the smaller products are transported further down the body of water. Attrition, the erosion of small particles as they are transported, and they gradually become more rounded and reduced in size. Longshore drift is a type of long-distance transportation. Waves come in at an angle to the beach, 
However, due to the mechanics of a weight down the slope, the wave always retreats perpendicular to the beach. This causes the sediment to have ultimately moved slightly with the wave's swash and backwash. This process repeats many, many times, and the sediment is greatly transported a long distance down the beach. The main principle of deposition is that a wave loses energy and cannot sustain moving material with it, causing it to fall and ultimately drop the material. There is also the process of coastal wave refraction to aid in this. As waves approach a coastal area, they are met by a headland which breaks the waves and causes them to diffract. However, they lose energy as they spread out even more and ultimately form a bay due to the lack of energy causing them to deposit material there.